All right, my good people, before we put our transmission back in, there's a couple of things we're going to service. Most importantly is the throw up bearing. Our old one is right in here. Uh, there was a couple times where this would get a little bit noisy during the summer, weirdly enough. Um, well, not weirdly enough, but then it would go back to quiet. So for a moment, I thought we were uh, dead in the water. But anyways, we're going to pull this out along with our clutch fork. We have our pin over here, or our clip that holds the clutch fork to the pivot pin bushing. These you can just kind of pop them out up to the side as you pull this out. But this baby is a little stuck there. You want to pay attention to the orientation of the throw up bearing. You want to make sure it goes in the same way. There's a couple points on the back, mainly the top and bottom here where they touch the clutch fork. You can see where they've worn down the clutch fork over the years. Those are going to be a um, greasing point. We're going to put a little bit of grease on there. But for now, this can sit out to the side. We can go ahead and pull this arm out. Just pushing that clip off. Same thing, this only goes on one way. You can do left or right, doesn't really matter. We have a new one of these just to replace it. Um, obviously this one isn't terribly worn, but you never know, these things are pretty inexpensive for what they are. We can just go ahead and toss in a new one. We have our clip over here that sits around the pivot pin bushing. We're gonna be replacing that as this is typically a plastic part and in some situations they can just fail and then you're stuck again dead in the water. To get this out, simply punch it through from the back using a small uh, brass punch. So we're gonna do that right now and get that out of there. So you use a small brass punch, line that up like so. And with that, here it is, uh, the old clip and pivot pin uh, bushing assembly. So we're gonna go ahead and set this to the side. We have both a new clip and pivot pin, but before we install it, we're gonna take a look at that guide tube. Now that is uh, definitely marred up. It's definitely been in there its whole life, a long time. So we're gonna be replacing it and we're gonna be taking a look at the seal behind it. To get that out, we have four T30s. We're gonna go ahead and just zap those out. And then with that, our guide tube will come out. You can see the marks on it just from the uh, throw up and writing over the years. Nice and polished. So again, pretty straightforward part. We're gonna go ahead and replace this while we have everything apart. This will just help all the new components that we already have or that we're going to be installing last a little bit longer. And here's our old seal. And you can see this is actually in pretty good shape. There's no residual oil under here. A little bit of water from just power washing everything uh, before installing it again. I'm just going to go ahead and clean that up. These don't typically go bad. If they were bad, you'd notice a lot, a lot of leaking. Um, there's kind of a cutout on the bottom of the bell housing that would allow for any oil like that to come out. What we did have a lot of was uh, oil from the rear main seal and the oil pan gasket that had failed. So that was really what was kind of dressing everything up uh, in grease and oil. So with that, we're just going to clean everything up, grab our new guide tube, our new hardware, and get that installed. Now we're going to install our new guide tube. Again, this is mainly just due to the amount of wear that was on the old one after take a drink, 250,000 miles, uh, we're gonna go ahead and replace it. Shaft is in great shape. There's always uh, normal to have the tiniest amount of play in it, but there's, there's nothing going on here, so that's a good feeling. We're gonna go ahead and line that up. We have some fresh hardware, which is also linked in the description below. It has some fresh thread locker already on the threads, ready to rock and roll. These T30s get torqued down to 10 Newton meters. 10 Newton meters ready to rock. Now we can install our new uh, clutch fork pivot pin. We're going with the steel one out of the E31 chassis versus the plastic one that came in the car. To get that in, I'm just gonna wipe that bore a little bit before we set that in there. The bore itself should be clean as I had the old plastic one in there, but can't hurt. Just give it a little spritz. Make sure it's nice and clean. I'm gonna go ahead and feed the pin in first. Almost goes in all the way. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the rubber mallet I've had hanging around today. I'm just gonna use the butt of it as a driver and my hammer. Give it a couple taps and it's good to go. With our pivot pin in, we can go ahead and install our new clip. 
gonna pinch in it to open it up. Come on, baby. There we go. Now we're gonna apply a thin, very thin layer of grease to the guide tube. The clutch kit actually includes some with it. So we'll go ahead and use that. What we're doing here is just adding the idea of grease, all right? We're not trying to coat this thing and change the color of it. It's simply just a small, thin amount. You don't want any of this stuff slinging around the uh, transmission and the clutch and flywheel and basically destroying everything we did today. Why would you want to do that? We'll go ahead and apply some to the splines as well. Again, very small amount. The same pace, we're going to apply a little bit of it to the back dimples of the clutch fork. Sorry. A little amount there, a little amount there, something like that, something like that. That'll just help us with wear. I'm just going to get this excess off on here. Now we can go ahead and feed our clutch fork in. Get it over our pins here, over our clip. Just opening up the clip to allow it to pop over the pivot pin. There we go. That's exactly what we want to see. All right, now we can install our new throw up bearing. I've marked the new one uh, top and bottom with this uh, blue paint marker. To make it easier for you though, a, pay attention to the way the old one came out, but B, you can see these uh, uh, stops on the back of the bearing. They're two different sizes. You have the thinner ones, and you have the thicker ones. The thicker ones go uh, left and right. The thinner ones are gonna be your top and bottom that right on the clutch fork. So with that, we're gonna add a little bit of this paste to those spots, the top and bottom spots, just to help with wear. And that's what's gonna sit up against the clutch fork. We'll pop this in. Get it over the little little dips, and we're good to rock and roll. Now, before we go ahead and throw this in, we have a little bit of work to do. If you remember when we pulled this out, we had some issues with the shifter, the bracketry not coming out. So we're gonna go ahead and service the bushings on that. Uh, we'll go ahead and service the plastic bearing on our shift bracket itself, all that good stuff as we throw it in. And we'll show you how to get that situated so that when we throw the transmission back in, uh, we're not really fighting with anything. So with that, follow me to the back of the housing for now. We're going to go ahead and change the selector rod uh, end bushing and go from there. All right, up top of here we have our selector rod. We're going to go ahead and remove this. It has one of these clips on the end that we recommend you always replace when doing. Uh, they kind of lose their tension when you start uh, bending them out like we are here. That's what this clip looks like right here. So we're going to replace that. Now with that, we can go ahead and pull this rod out. The side on the actual bushing here was pretty nice, but we're gonna go ahead and clean the other end of it. Just get some of this corrosion off. But for now, we'll set this to the side. Now we can work on removing this bushing here. It has a C-clip, which you can see on the new one here. It is open on one end. This one comes ready to install, but we need to remove this so we can remove the pin and pull it out. I'm just gonna use a small pick tool. You can use a small flathead, whatever you have. So just open up the clip, get it popped back. Just working this kind of back and forth, that pin's gonna fall through. And there it is. The internal bushing that's in there is completely gone, completely obliterated. But that's okay, that's why we're replacing this. This is gonna help the feel of this a lot. We're gonna go ahead and clean this out. All right, that is nice and clean. We're gonna put some fresh grease on there. We're using the Lucamali multi-purpose grease, again, for this bit here. We have just a little bit of the graphite stuff left, which I would have loved to use as well. But this is good, uh, has good weather resistance, good water, re water resistance, so should last for a pretty long time. And seeing that this is pretty high up, I'm hoping we don't see too, too much moisture up there. But with that, we can get our new bushing on, get that pushed in. 
push that into gear. We're gonna get, we have a new pin. You can clean up the old one. However, with such a delicate wear item like so, it's easier to just replace it. So we have our new pin that we're gonna lock down once we get this bushing situated all the way. There we go. And then we can push the C-clip forward. And now we're nice and locked in. Right there, we're in neutral. It's exactly what we want to see, my good people. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and clean this uh, selector rod up real quick. I'll apply a little bit more grease on there and then we'll get that fed in. We're gonna install the end of our rod once more. Make sure you're installing it in the same position that you removed it. We have plenty of grease to go around. Push that back. <laughs> We're gonna install our new clip. Make sure it clips down all the way. There we go. And now this baby is ready to rock and roll. With that, before we go ahead and feed this back in, we wanna get our shifter, actual shifter back in in our arm. But you can take a look at this. These bushings are completely wasted. You definitely want to replace these. There's a couple of different options available. You can go with some PowerFlex bushings. Uh, you can stick with the OE. This is my daily driver. And to be quite frank, while the poly ones are nice, they're quite a, a pain in the butt to install. The factory ones are going to be just as tough, but a little bit easier to begin with now. So we're just going to keep it easy. Keep it OEM, or keep it genuine OE, and just install some factory rubber bushings. Those are going to look just a little bit nicer than uh, than what we took out. So with that, we're just gonna hop over to the vise. We're gonna use the vise to hold this in place, pop these old ones out and pop these new ones in. All right, my good people, we're gonna work on removing these bushings. I'm just using the vise here today in the shop, a couple pick tools, maybe a flathead if we need to, to kind of pry these out. I think they should come out not too bad. They're pretty wasted. Um, if you really need to, you can try burning them out just like old suffering bushings, but I think just, just looking at these, these are just gonna pop right out. They're just, there's nothing left to these. I'd be lying to you if I didn't say I was dreading this kind of all day, but uh, the removal wasn't, wasn't too bad. So I'm gonna clean that up a little bit. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and pop our new bushings in. We're gonna try just going in dry. Almost, a little bit of brake cleaner here. Brake cleaner kind of acts as a lubricant. All right now I'm just pulling the little lip out. If I had a little bit more brake cleaner, uh, this would have just you know, popped right through, if only. All right, well I have you here, my good people. We're gonna grab our um, shift lever. We're gonna get our new uh, ball bearing bushing, if you will. We're gonna go ahead and pop those in together. This will be one piece ready to rock and roll. And then we're gonna install this back into the housing or into the tunnel first before we feed our trans back in. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. We have our old shift lever here with our old uh, bushing. This guy's pretty worn out, pretty crusty. As you saw, we had to take this out kind of backwards because the uh, one of the clips did not come out for the bracket. So either way, we're going to replace all this. Here's our old, our old bushing. I'm just going to go ahead and pull that off. I'm going to get some APC on this towel. We're just going to go ahead and clean up this ball. These also can wear over time. Uh, you would have to replace the whole lever to replace this part right here. This one's in not bad shape considering the mileage of the car. Obviously the new bushing is going to help a lot. In an ideal world we would have this here. Or I would have been preemptive and gotten one and replaced it. But honestly it's going to be just fine. And at this point all we're doing here are improvements. Nothing's going to be worse than when we started. I'm going to take our new ball bearing. I like to apply a little bit of grease to these before we pop them in. Just to allow the ball to kind of move around a little bit freely. I'm just gonna apply the grease to the ball itself. There we go. Much better. Now this is the important part where before you feed this back into the uh, bracket here, you wanna make sure that the lever is facing the correct position. So for us, this would be the front of the transmission or the front of the car. This is gonna be the tail end over here. So we're gonna pop this in uh, the same way it came out. All right, my good people, it's pretty straightforward. Once it clips in, it stays in. So now that's all one piece. 
All that we really have left is the bushing that goes on the end of here, which we popped out of the bracket in the tunnel earlier. We're gonna go ahead and slide our new bushing in, and then we're gonna pick it back up underneath the car, getting this thing into place. All right, my good people, we are under the car. We're gonna reinstall the shifter, uh, which should have stayed in the car, essentially, if this was able to come out properly the first time around. We have our new shifter bushing here on the end. This one just should slide right on. We added a little bit of grease to keep it nice and easy. Uh, we have the cutout up top, just like the old one that came out. You wanna remember that there's a slit on either side of the bushing. That is what keys into the bracket up top there. Uh, we have a little bit of grease around the boot here just to help it kind of clip into the metal tunnel. Make sure you have your shift lever in the correct orientation. We have ours facing the exact same way that it came out. Here's a little bit of a better view of that. Let's go ahead and throw this in. So my goal is to get the rubber boot situated first so that it kind of holds everything up for us. All right, now we have our bushing. I'm gonna kind of line that up with the slots uh, and the little tabs coming off of the bracket as best as possible. So we're gonna try getting one slide in first. And there we go. And now our shifter's in, ready to rock and roll. And I can just hang out there until we get the uh, transmission in place. So with that, we're gonna get our transmission back onto the transmission jack. This time I think we're gonna try to throw a ratchet strap around it just so that we don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, the way it came out wasn't quite, uh, wasn't, wasn't quite the best way. Uh, unfortunately, this was really hanging us up, no pun intended. Uh, but with that, let's get the trans situated and we'll catch you in a moment. All right, my good people, the transmission is on the transmission jack. We're gonna start raising it up. We're gonna be mindful of our uh, reverse uh, switch harness cable here that has three clips on the transmission that hold it in place. So once we get it up higher, we'll clip it into this one first and we'll be able to pull it through as needed. Uh, we're gonna make sure that we don't bind up with the bracket up top of there. That goes through the uh, two bolt holes on the driver's side. And yeah, it's just gonna be a little bit of uh, finessing. If you've done a clutch before, then it's kind of the same process all the time. You're hitting the fire, or you may hit the firewall depending on the car you're working on. Uh, you're hitting the tunnel, kind of getting the angle right. So just keep that in mind. We're gonna go up and uh, do our best to line up the trans with the engine. Obviously we want it to be perfectly flush before we get any hardware in. There's dowels just like there were on the uh, flywheel side of things and the pressure plate that help align the transmission to the block. So we're gonna keep all those things into consideration. But with that, let's get to it. So as you can see, we're pretty dang close. Everything's obviously lining up. The bottom of the belt housing is a little bit closer to the engine than the top. A lot of that has to do with the engine wanting to pitch forward, uh, which is why we use the engine support brace bar. So right now, our goal is just to get the rear end of the transmission up a little bit more if we can to get that to be flush. And if not, what we'll do is we'll run up front and just crank on the engine support bar a bit more uh, to give us a little bit more pitch. But for now, we're just gonna keep, uh, keep trying to get it nice and close. We don't wanna start any hardware until everything's touching evenly. All right, at this point, you may or may have not heard, but the dowels made contact with the bell housing. Everything's nice and smushed together. We're gonna to start a couple of the hardware by hand, just to A, make it safe so that we can kind of move things around and it doesn't lose its spot. So with that, we're gonna to refer to, or at least I'm going to, we have our new hardware, right side by side with our old hardware and our location of where everything goes. We'll start with some of the easier ones to reach, maybe eight, seven, and four. And then if we can, we'll throw one in either one or two up top. But we won't get too crazy. The goal is here to get them all started by hand. And we'll walk you through the uh, torquing process and what torque specs each one requires. All right, my good people, we're gonna feed in the two bottom E10s first. Now, for those of you that were paying attention, we're not installing the bracket just yet for the oxygen sensor harness, as we're gonna pull these back out once we have everything a little bit more buttoned up. Uh, but for now, it's just to kind of keep everything uh, together from falling on top of us. And again, I cannot stress enough, do not install any hardware until your transmission is flush all the way around with the back of the block. If you do, that is a uh, cause for bad news. You can either crack your uh, oil pan, which ask me how I know, maybe you'll crack something else, even worse, uh, strip something out. So just take your time, do not rush, especially for those of you good people flying along from home. I salute you. This is definitely a, a big transmission to get in and out on the ground. All right, while well, I have you there, we have two more bolt holes right next to our exhaust manifolds. We'll go ahead and toss some hardware in there as well. 
These are the two E18s right next to the header. With a few of the lower bell housing bolts in place, we can breathe a little bit easier now. What we're gonna do here just for filming sake is we're gonna switch over to a screw jack so we can get this big bulky thing out of our way and show you how to get the rest of the hardware in and torque everything down. All right, we're gonna start with the bolt hole that's highest on the driver's side that we can reach, which is gonna be the one that holds the bracket for our O2 sensor hardware, our oil level sensor, and on the flip side, the reverse switch sensor or harness. So these are all harnesses. So we're just gonna line up the bottom of our bracket here with our bolt hole as best as we can. We're gonna go in and blind, and we'll get one of the E18 feds in, and then we'll uh, move on lower so we're not blocking ourselves with another bolt and bracket beforehand. We're gonna leave that one a little loose so that we can get the other bracket up top with the other bolt hole later. Moving down, we have one of the E10s that's gonna hold this uh, small bracket that we kept with the hardware. This is for our clutch soft line. So for now, we'll get the bracket fit in and then we'll mess with the soft line later. At this point, we're pretty much running out of uh, hardware that we can easily reach from underneath. So we're gonna start getting our extensions handy and our sockets and we'll give you the best view possible of the hardware going in via the top and then we'll torque everything down. All right, we're going for the top right bolt underneath the cylinder head. It's an E14. We're gonna fish it in with our very long extension. These 25, or these E14s get torqued down to 25 newton meters plus an additional 130 degrees. These are the funky aluminum bolts. To be completely honest, because of the angle of everything, they are gonna be a little bit tricky to torque down properly. So our goal is to get them in as straight as possible, get our tool as straight as possible, and then use our torque wrench to get them the rest of the way there. That's why these long extensions are so critical to have on a job like this. There's 25. All right, with that, we're gonna move on to the next cylinder head bolt a little bit higher, so let's do that now. All right, now we're gonna basically fish from the back of the transmission all the way through and get the other E14 gets torqued to the same spec, my good people. All right, we went ahead and snugged it up by hand. We have our torque wrench. We have our wrench as straight as possible. All right, now we'll do our additional 130. All right, to the left of that one, on top of our starter, if you will, the highest starter bolt, we have another E14 we're gonna fish in. What we're doing here is we have a little bit of tape on the end of the socket and the head of the bolt just to make it easier for us in case we drop them on top of the bell housing. We don't have to do too much, uh, too much fishing for them. This one we're going to torque down another E14 to 20 newton meters plus 180 degrees. All right. With that one situated, we have another bolt remaining to the left. This is one of the bigger ones. E18, that one helps hold in the bracket for the oxygen sensor harness and the reverse light switch harness. So let's get us, uh, let's get the camera situated and we'll go ahead and get that one next. All right, my good people, with this bracket one, what I ended up doing is I just snugged up the uh, E18 by hand and we're just gonna go ahead and torque it down now so that it holds our bracket in place and we don't have to worry about trying to align the bracket with the upper bolt later. So same deal, 25 Newton meters plus 130 degrees on the E18. All right, we'll get our socket off. All right, last E18. Let me get this one started. Same deal. All right, now that we've snugged it in using the electric ratchet, we're just gonna go ahead and torque it down. 25 Newton meters at 130 degrees for this last E18. Alrighty, we have all the bell housing bolts situated. Now we're gonna work on reconnecting our shifter, our selector rod, all that good stuff. All right, we're gonna get a little extra grease on our shaft here for our selector rod. We're gonna go ahead and feed that into the bottom of our shift lever, which has also been greased up. And we'll get our locking clip. Make sure you replace these. They tend to uh, flex out or get rusty uh, when you take them on and off too many times. So we're gonna go ahead and just pop this one on. 
Okay. We're gonna rotate it, make sure it's actually locked in all the way. We don't want it to pop out on this while we're driving. Oh yeah, that looks good. All right, now further up ahead, we're gonna go ahead and secure the shifter bracket assembly onto the top of the transmission. That's where we have the two fun clips, one on either side. Those are what kind of got us earlier at the beginning and made it un, uh, impossible for us to drop this trans. So we're gonna line those up, make sure our bushings are lined up with the holes on the trans, and we can feed our new clips in. All right, we have the bracket kind of in place. We need to pop it down so the bushings go into the transmission. All right, with that, they're in. Now we're gonna get our clip situated. So right up here we have the left opening. You can see some of the grease poking through for the left clip. Just so you have an idea of where that's gonna go, we're gonna reach up and feed our new clip in. I apologize for the view for a hot moment while I get my big, fan, big fat hand in there. Now we're gonna reach up. We're gonna make sure that our shifter bracket is down in our transmission, which it is here. Sorry for the view. We're just gonna get this clip up in there and then we can fold it down and lock it. All right, there's a better clip of, or there's a better view, also a clip, of our clip, and what it should look like as we get it started. We're just gonna make sure that our shifter bracket is in the right spot. Just going in with a long pry bar to help it in. Then with that up there, we can go ahead and pull it down to lock it in. And now, my good people, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on the passenger side or the right side. Uh, this one, there's going to not be much of a view, unfortunately, but the idea remains the same. Same thing, make sure our bracket's in. We're going to do something similar with the pry bar and just work that in. And these bushings are all new, so it's going to be a very tight fit. The, the last right clip finally went all the way in. It was giving us a bit of a fight. Uh, so what we did is we had Ethan hop inside the car just wiggle the shifter back and forth a few times and then he was able to uh, give the bushing a little bit of adjustment that it needed before we can go ahead and bring this clip all the way down. Now we just have to reach in there, make sure that it locks in proper and we can move on. Honestly, this took longer than putting in the transmission to the, getting the transmission to the block. So if you're having a hard time with it, don't worry, you're not alone. All right, with that, my good people, while I have you here, let's not forget, let's just plug in our reverse switch now. You can tuck that line in here. Make sure you tuck it in the other clip if you haven't done so already, which is right up here. All right, now we have that plugged in, our shifter is all secured. We're gonna go ahead and raise the transmission up with the screw jack and get our transfer case mount situated so that we can bolt that up and everything is hanging on its own. So let's do that now. All right, with those of you following along, before we do our transfer case mount, we're gonna do our fluid since we did drain it earlier in the video. We have our fill plug out and we're gonna remove our drain plug once more. We just installed these while we moved the transmission around the shop. We didn't want it to get any debris or fluid in it or any water in it while we cleaned it. We'll let that little bit of crap drain out for a hot second. And then we're gonna go ahead and install our new drain plug. We're gonna grab our 14 millimeter hex, just snug it down, and then we can go ahead and torque it to 60 Newton meters. Beautiful. Now with that, let's head over to the flip side and fill it with fluid. Okay, on the flip side, we have our screw jack uh, leveling out our transmission so that we can fill the transfer case properly. You don't wanna have it at an angle, otherwise you're gonna get the incorrect fluid level. We're just using our transfer pump like we mentioned at the beginning of the video. You can use whatever tool you have, syringe style or transfer pump style to fill it. And we're just gonna start filling it until it starts to spill out of the fill plug or fill hole into a slow dribble and that'll be good for us today. Just like a differential or anything of that sort, you wanna service these every 50,000 miles or so. 30 if you're trying to be uh, super preventative. So for us, we're just over the 50 actually, I think. Uh, 175 was the last one, so we're definitely uh, do. It was a little dark when I went in. This is some nice, clear, uh, this looks like some honey crisp cider, you know? Something nice and cold that you would pour after a long, hot day of working on your E9X. And for what it's worth, it took almost 600 milliliters of fluid, just over half a liter, so pretty standard with the capacity. 
All right, new fill plug, same deal, my good people, 14 millimeter hex. We're gonna go ahead and torque that down to 60 newton meters. There we go. All right, now with that, we're gonna get rid of this uh, catch pan and we're gonna lower the transmission just a bit once more so that we can get our transfer case mount in place. We'll get that 18 millimeter bolt sorted first and then we can go ahead and install the 613s. All right, we're gonna get our bracket on. We're gonna go ahead and feed this through. It's gonna kinda wanna pop around our bushing. It's a snug fit. Just gonna work that over. All right, we're gonna be installing our bolt once more. We have our nut on the other side. All right, with that just kind of on there, we're gonna go ahead and get our transmission seated up so that the bracket can sit flush up against the tunnel, and then we'll torque it down. We'll make sure that the 13s line up and get everything snug so we don't risk tearing our bushing. This uh, torque mount, transfer case mount bushing, they don't typically wear out too often. We don't see them too, too much here at FCP Euro for the most part. I think on manual cars, they tend to last a little bit longer than the automatics. I'm not sure if it's just because of the lack of load when you're idling on a manual versus the automatic, but regardless, we're gonna go ahead and just get these 13s started by hand first so that we know our bracket lines up. Then once we get this mount secured, we're gonna hop back over to the bell housing, finalize the bottom bell housing bolts. We can get this screw jack out of our way or transmission jack, depending on what you're using at home. And we can uh, get that electronic uh, side of things and slave cylinder all buttoned up. Okay, reminder, three long 13s on the right side. They really only go in one way. The shorty 13s go on the driver's side. Now we're just gonna go ahead and snug up the 13s using the electric impact. Then we're gonna go ahead and torque everything down to 19 Newton meters. And then our 18 millimeter bolt, we're gonna snug down and we're gonna torque that down to 68 Newton meters. We're gonna use an 18 millimeter wrench to counter hold. Just snug that up and then we'll set our torque wrench to 68. All right, now with that, my good people, we'll plug in the electrical to our transfer case motor. And then don't forget, we need to button up the bottom bell housing bolts, get our bracket back on for the O2 sensors. So let's do that now. Nice click. Nice click, all right, let's take care of the bell housing hardware. All right, we're gonna start with the two E18s by the O2 sensors. We're gonna snug those down. Same deal, my good people, 25 Newton meters plus an additional 130 degrees. Now we're gonna remove the bottom two E10s, those we just put in earlier as insurance so that nothing would fall on us while we were uh, getting the transmission back on. And by nothing, I mean the transmission. So we're gonna go ahead and just zap those out. The E10s get torqued down to 19 Newton meters, including the one up top that has the bracket for the soft line for the slave cylinder. So make sure you tighten that one down as well if you haven't already. Now this harness can go back into its home. We had popped these alligator clips earlier off of the bracket just to make life a little bit easier for us. The oil level plug can go back forward and get plugged in underneath the oil pan. in right there and we can swing our oxygen sensors over once more and then this bracket we're gonna have to revisit but if you remember it it was held in over here on the side we'll go ahead and grab it just to show you what that looks like that one goes over on the side of the transmission there's a small little tab that keys into the hole up top there so that it only goes in one way and it goes in at the proper height and then we're just gonna use the 13 millimeter wrench to snug it up doesn't need to be crazy tight. It's just holding a small light bracket. All right, and just to wrap up things up front here, my good people, the next thing is gonna be to bolt in our slave cylinder. So let's go ahead and get that situated. That way, everything from the bell housing, pretty much up to the transfer case, is good to rock and roll. All right, my good people, we're gonna feed our slave cylinder in. We're also gonna get our soft line through this bracket. We can do that once it's all bolted up and in its home. So I'm gonna rotate this around a bit. Trying to make sure that this goes back in and connects with the clutch fork inside there. 
I'm just kind of pulling it back a little bit, making sure that the rod itself feels good. And we're gonna push this on, which is a good sign, which means we found the clutch fork, two 13 millimeter nuts. This one holds the line as well, the bottom uh, stud. Gets the bracket with the soft line. Okay. If we can just get that started a little bit, that'll hold it in place. Both of these 13s get snugged down to 22 Newton meters. Now we're just gonna go ahead and tuck in our soft line up top on the bracket. Wanna keep this away from the propeller shaft as much as possible, so this bracket right here will do exactly that for us. All right, and now with that situated, my good people, we can go ahead and move on by installing our front drive shaft. So let's do that now. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pop our drive shaft back in. Just gonna make sure it lines up properly with our output shaft up front on the diff. And here on the inside. We'll start with the hardware here at the transfer case. We have the hardware just hand started over at the transfer case side of things so nothing falls on us. Now we're gonna do the four E12s up front at the differential. These eight E12s get torqued down to 20 Newton meters plus an additional 45 degrees. To counter hold, we're just gonna use a uh, small flathead screwdriver. The torque value isn't high enough where we're gonna damage anything or uh, damage the yoke. So that will work just fine. If we were using a higher torque value, there would need to be a better way of uh, sustaining or of keeping the drive shaft in place. So since it's so small, flathead screwdriver will work fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and get this in here. Just snug these up first. All right, now we can go ahead and situate the back half of the drive shaft. Same thing, crisscross pattern. All right. All right, with that, our front drive shaft is installed, my good people. From here, we can move on to the rear, get some heat shields on the exhaust, and button this baby up. All right, my good people, before we go ahead and install our drive shaft, we are replacing the gibos. The bigger one is for the front, the small one's for the rear. Now, on these, they can go on either way. What you want to look for is the arrows on the side of the actual flex disc. The arrows are going to point to the flange. So as long as you have an arrow pointing in the correct direction to the flange, on the transmission side of things and one pointing to the flange on the drive shaft side of things, you're gonna be just fine. If you get them backwards, then you're gonna feel some weird vibrations. It's not gonna install properly. You're not gonna have a good time. So in this case, we're gonna start by lining up the first set of arrows to line up with our transmission flange. The actual gibo keys into the back of the flange and the drive shaft with these washers. So it's kind of nice. It reassures you that you've installed everything correctly. And then for that, we're gonna go ahead and install the hardware. Again, we have 16 millimeter bolts. The uh, thicker head bolts are gonna be the ones that go into the transmission flange. And the thinner head bolts use the nut and bolt combo for the drive shaft flange. All right, for now, those are gonna be hand tight. We're gonna go ahead and pop the gibo on the rear, do the same thing, and then we can fit in our drive shaft, get those started by hand, and then we'll tighten down everything nicely. So, same idea, we want our arrows pointing at our flanges. That can, that can key in nicely like so. For the hardware that goes directly into the flange, we have the Torx. And then for the ones that hold the drive shaft to the Gibo, we have the 16 millimeter heads. So, a little bit different in the rear. Otherwise, the same principles though. Flange with arrow, arrow with flange. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and feed our drive shaft back in. We're gonna line up the paint marks on our flanges with the paint marks on our drive shaft, just to kind of put everything back uh, the same way it came out. Obviously, in this case, we didn't split the drive shaft today. So everything should be same balance in the way it came out, but it doesn't hurt to be a little extra and use the paint marks. There we go. Nice and easy, we're gonna grab the two 13 millimeter bolts, just get those snugged in gently by hand so it holds the drive shaft in place, and then we'll go from there. These 13s will be the last thing we torque down out of the drive shaft things once the ends are all situated. All right, up front we're gonna get the 16s going. We're just gonna pass these through the uh, drive shaft 
and the flex disc or Gibo. Get our new 16 millimeter nuts in the back, just started by hand. If you got your hardware mixed up, the longer hardware is for the bigger flex disc up front. The shorter hardware, as far as these 16 millimeter bolts, is for the rear flex disc. Who's gonna go ahead and snug up this hardware first? Then we're gonna go ahead and torque these down to 68 Newton meters using a 16 millimeter wrench on the back side of counter hold. I'm just using the 16 millimeter nut from the other studs or the other bolts to hold the Gibo assembly from spinning while I tighten down the other 16s. These are the ones with the bigger heads going into the transmission output flange. Same 68 Newton meters for those as well. Now with those situated, we can move on to the rear and get the rear gibo situated. Same deal, my good people. We're just gonna get these started by hand. Then we're gonna torque all the hardware down to 60 Newton meters here in the rear. All right, now we have the drive shaft bolted up. Now we can go ahead and move over to the center support bearing and get those two 13 millimeter bolts snugged down. All right, these two 13 millimeter bolts are gonna get torqued down to 21 Newton meters. I'm just gonna snug them up first. Okay, okay, then we can paint mark them. And install this bracket that helps hold our splash shield underneath before we forget. Just a 13 millimeter bolt and the end of the bracket keys into the frame there. All right, my good people, we're gonna go ahead and install our splash shields now. So almost seeing the, uh, the end here. So things are about to get exciting. Now this heat shield is a little bit worse for wear, so we're gonna have to do some uh, modifications, if you will, to get it to sit a little bit better. But after 250,000 miles, I can't be too mad at it. Now we have this front heat shield one, which is an eight millimeter bolt. And we have a 10 mil and a 10 mil. These are the flat, almost speed nut looking. Uh, these got held on by the brace that goes underneath our exhaust. And this next piece, we can kind of just key in. This one keys above the rear one, or above the front one, if you will. Then we got two eight mils for our little splash shield over here on the side. All right, good people, at this point we are underneath the car. We have our exhaust system ready to rock and roll. We have it set on two screw jacks. Obviously, we're working on the lift. However, for those of you at home, you can use some floor jacks or a second set of hands to just kind of help you raise it up. Our goal here is going to be to get it up nice and even. Um, you're going to see me going back and forth between the screw jacks. And then get it hung up on the exhaust hangers in the rear first. And then we can do the bracket up top here and the hardware. So with that, let's get to it. A little bit of grease on these hangers makes life a little bit easier. A little bit of silicone spray, we have that instead. Just something to help lube up the shaft and get that nice and through. Beautiful. All right, now we're gonna join the front half of our exhaust. Now, as you can see, these flanges are in really bad shape on this car. Unfortunately, New England uh, does that for us. All right, over here, we're gonna use a little bit of copper RTV on the flanges, just because these are in such bad shape on this car. Uh, a lot of New England winders, every single one to be exact, uh, has been seen by the life of this car. So we're gonna do a little bit of this to help seal it up. Uh, realistically, this midsection should be replaced though, just because these flanges are, are toast. So a little bit of this copper stuff is gonna help seal us up and keep us from having any leaks. Hardware is also gonna change for us a bit. Obviously we don't have the factory hardware here on this car anymore, so just be mindful of these sizes of the hardware are gonna change. As an example, the hardware I'm using here out of our hardware cabinet uses a 12 mil for the head of the bolt and a 13 for the nut that I'm gonna be using today. So that's gonna be a little bit different on your vehicle. Hopefully yours is in much better shape. Let's get one started at the top. Let's get our exhaust basket on the other side as well started. Then we can start snugging things up. All right, now we're just going to go ahead and snug these up nicely using the electric ratchet. All right, now we have this situated. We can go ahead and reinstall our splash shields. So let's do that now. All right, my good people, next on our splash shield brace side of things, we have uh, the one that goes here in the center. That one is held in by eight T50s. We're just going to go ahead and get this 
set up with a couple screws by hand and then we'll go ahead and snug them down using the electric impact. For those of you following along that want to torque them down, it's going to be the same idea as the center support bearing hardware. Uh, roughly 19, 20 newton meters if you want to torque those down. Again, we're just going to snug them up gently using the uh, electric impact today. All right, with that, let's install our rear brace and then we'll button it up with the plastic shields. This brace is held on by one-time use hardware, so we want to be sure to install new hardware when reinstalling this brace. All of this is linked in the description below. They're torque to yield bolts, which is why you want to replace them. Otherwise, I'd say go ahead and reuse the old stuff, but that's not the case, unfortunately. So you get one of these started by hand back here. And the two longer bolts go in the front. We're gonna use the electric impact to snug up the hardware. We have two 16s in the middle. We'll do those first. And then we'll do the 18s on the ends. We have one back here in the center. We have one on either end. Then we'll take our torque wrench, set it to 100 newton meters, and then we'll do an additional 90 degrees or a quarter turn on each one, and we should be good to go. All right, now we have these all secured. We can go ahead and install the last couple splash shields, uh, the plastic ones, so let's do that now. Before we put this most forward shield on, we still have one last exhaust bracket to install. This is the one that goes off the transfer case. If you removed it, now would be the time to reinstall it, my good people. We're just gonna go ahead and zap this in gently. e tents. All right, now with this, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our splash shield, so let's do that now. 10 millimeter plastic nut for this one back here, coming off the stud. This comes off one of the studs that holds the heat shield in place underneath it. All right, my good people, with that, our splash shields are secured. We have two small things left to do up top. We're gonna to remove that engine brace and button up our interior. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, inside the car, my good people, we're just gonna clip our boot back on. Get that in there nicely. And just kind of pop that back in. Then we'll take our shift knob. Get that situated like so. Give it a good pop. Good to go. Now let's head back up front. All right, my good people, back over at the front of the car. We're gonna remove our engine support brace. This is pretty much loose at this point. It did its job in helping keeping the engine level so it wouldn't nosedive on us while we had the transmission out. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this the rest of the way. And we can remove our tow hook tool. Again, this is linked in the description below if your vehicle does not have it, but basically E9X and older, uh, I believe all have the same thread pitch. You can use the one out of your vehicle. Then we can tuck our beauty cover back over. Two five millimeter hex screws. All right, my good people. And with that, that is gonna conclude this DIY for today. Definitely a big job, uh, especially a little bit bigger on the X-Drive vehicles. Of course, a uh, smaller transmission situation going on on the rear-wheel drive models. Highly recommend the lift if you're doing this at home. However, that is not to say that it is impossible to do on the ground. Ask me how I know. Just be very careful. Uh, the transmission's super heavy, especially if you keep the transfer case unit attached to it. But otherwise, pretty straightforward. If you've done a rear-wheel drive car, uh, rear-wheel drive BMW, you can do this job, no problem. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today or you want to yell at me for something I did wrong, leave that in the comments section as well. And if you like this DIY and you want to see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.